I love helping writers to make their stories even better, so I'm going to show you a few common errors I see in my developmental editing work to show you how to fix them. I've made up some examples to demonstrate, so let's start with the first thing, and it's something that catches quite a few writers off guard. It's squashing too many actions into one exact moment. What I mean by this is packing too many physical movements from your character into one exact moment or one second. It ends up making the writing feel a bit artificial, and it speeds up the pace too much, which makes things feel a bit flat. And the root of this problem centers around one annoying little word. Let's have a look at an example, see if you can spot the word I mean. As she reached the summit, she headed through the archway and along the path to the fortress. Now, at first glance, that might not seem too bad, but the more you look at it, the more it feels a little off, and that's because there's too much packed into that one moment. The annoying little word is as. And I don't mean annoying for readers, I mean annoying for writers because the word as just creates a bunch of problems. The reason this sentence feels off is because as she reached the summit is defining the exact moment that this part of the story takes place in. It's pointing us to the exact second that she arrives at the top of the mountain, the exact footfall. And there's no other direction about time and the text doesn't have any breaks in it. The problem is, as well as stepping up to the summit, we've also got her passing under the archway and heading along the path. And because we haven't broken the passage up, it reads as though all of those three things are happening in the exact same moment as she steps foot on top of the mountain. Which, of course, they can't be, unless she's, you know, seriously quick. I see this mistake pop up all the time. It's an easy one to make, but it's also an easy one to fix. And in fact, we've got a couple of options for how we can approach it. I just want to take a few seconds to remind you about the developmental editing service that I run on my website. If you've got a piece of a novel or some short fiction that you really would like some feedback on, check out the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. Right, back to the video. Option one is to assign timings for each action instead of having them all happen at once. That way, if we have multiple actions happening and we have multiple moments mentioned, everything balances out. We could say something really simple like this. She reached the summit, then headed through the archway and along the path to the fortress. This is fine, it's perfectly functional, and all we've had to do to make it work is drop the as and then add a then to signify another moment. And sometimes a simple sentence like that is exactly what you need. But for the most part, I think it's a little bit boring. So maybe we can add to it to make it a little bit interesting and to get a bit further away from that initial as error. We've got at least three details to mention in this sentence, the summit, the archway, and the fortress, but we've still only got one action, which is reaching the summit. If we add another action, we can combine two of those details, and we might as well add a bit of description while we're there. As she reached the summit, she saw an ornate stone archway. There's two details, with two actions and a bit of description. Then we've just got the path to the fortress left to cover, We'll need another action to send her along on her way, and probably a bit of description to blend it all together. As she reached the summit, she saw an ornate stone archway, marking the beginning of a rough path. Keeping her head down, she passed beneath it towards a fortress in the distance, almost swallowed by mist. So, a bit wordy, but now we have two distinct moments in this sentence. It's reaching the summit and seeing the archway, which could conceivably happen at the same time, and then passing under the archway onto the path. So the original problem of all of this happening in the exact same moment is gone. It's not quite as direct as the other simpler version, but I do think it's more interesting. So let's have a quick recap. This doesn't work. It feels a little bit off because she can't be cresting the summit and passing through an archway and walking along the path all at once. And there's nothing wrong with this. This is the simplest, most straightforward way to fix that problem by just adding another moment. But this might be a bit more interesting because we've added some description to and there's more variation in the actions. Next, let's have a look at another thing I see a fair bit that's not too dissimilar. It's too much consecutive action. And I don't mean like a John Wick film, I mean general actions, people doing things, making movements. The best way to demonstrate this is with an example, you'll see what I mean. They ran out of the building and down the stairs to the getaway car. Then they sped away, running a red light. When they were far enough away, they got out and went inside the safe house. Then they went upstairs to the hideout to count the money. I'm sure you agree, this doesn't feel like the best writing. And I think there's two reasons for that. The first is, there's no detail or description to the writing. So that kind of makes it feel like a list of stuff that happened. We could be reading a plot summary here. It reminds me of reading spark notes for those really long novels I was supposed to read in high school and never actually did. 
I mean, it would remind me of that if any of that had ever happened. The problem is there's nothing in writing like that that will invoke any kind of emotional response from the reader. There's nothing in it really that will interest them or captivate them in any way. And the second reason I think this falls down so badly is pacing. Running out of the building, getting in the car, driving away, getting out of the car, taking everything upstairs, all of these events are so close together that the pace is just way too fast. This means the reader's forced to gloss over a bunch of this stuff that's happening that might be interesting, but they can't spend any time imagining any of this or getting immersed in it because they're already moving on to the next bit. You might be thinking, but if it's a fast-paced story or a fast-paced scene, wouldn't it make sense that it's, you know, fast-paced? To an extent, yeah, but I think more important than speed, wouldn't you want tension? You'd want there to be a possibility that the characters don't get out on time or get caught or whatever. And if your story comes at a pace so fast that it steamrolls over any of those possibilities all in the space of five seconds, you won't have any tension. And that might mean it's not all that satisfying to read either. So how do we fix writing like this? This is a tough one, not because it's hard to fix, but I think there's just loads of different ways we could fix this, and it depends what kind of story you're writing or what kind of writer you are. For me, I'd approach it by thinking, how can I slow this down and how can I disguise just how many actions are taking place back to back? So let's work on slowing it down initially. For me, there's far too much happening in too small of a space here. So I'd start by trying to make that space a bit bigger. I'd move things onto new lines and change the physical presentation of the story on the page. They ran out of the building and down the stairs to the getaway car. Then they sped away, running a red light. When they were far enough away, they got out and went inside the safe house. Then they went upstairs to their hideout to count the money. That small change, I think, slows down the pace just a little bit. It makes it seem like some time has passed between them running a red light and arriving back at the safe house. The next way I'd try to slow it down is by making all of those moments just last a little bit longer. We can do that by adding some detail to them, whether that's expanding the actions themselves or just adding a bit of description. If there's more stuff there to read, then the pace will naturally be slower. They burst out of the glass doors and down the stairs out front to where the getaway car sat idling, the driver revving the engine. He gunned it as soon as they got in, running a red light as they sped off. A few blocks away, they hurried out of the car and went inside the abandoned building they were using as a safe house. Then they climbed the rickety stairs up to their loft hideout to count the score. Alright, so that's a bit lengthier and it reads a bit slower. Those moments last a little bit longer because I've added to them, mainly just with visual details. But you might notice that that feeling is still there. This happened, then this happened, then this, then this, then this. We need to disguise that. And I think we can do it by reordering things here and there, and by varying the way the sentences are presented. They burst out of the glass doors and down the stairs out front to where the getaway car sat idling, the driver revving the engine. There was barely time for them to pile in before he gunned it, running a red light as they sped off. He didn't slow down until they were a few blocks away, out of the range of the sirens and alarms. Their base was in the loft of an abandoned house, and it took them a few trips, keeping quiet, to carry the bags of cash up the stairs. So this reads a little slower still with more detail and because I've varied the sentence structure a little bit, it disguises how it's basically still all this action, then this action, then this, and then this. Perfect writing, it ain't. But compared to the first version, it's way more interesting and engaging for readers, I think. Let's recap this. This doesn't work, it reads way too fast and there's no details to give it any depth. This is slightly better, the pace is slightly improved and all we've done is spread things out on the page and added a few more details. This is even better because it has more description still to slow down that pace properly. Plus the variation in sentences hides how much is happening consecutively. As much as writing is about creating images and painting pictures for our readers, it's also about hiding the mechanics of storytelling in plain sight. I think these examples show how big a difference concealing things can make. Though the improvements I've made to these errors have helped somewhat, I think they could be made way better still by pulling the readers a little closer to the characters in these stories and almost into the scenes themselves. To find out how I would do that, try this video next. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.